He's right there, Dad. Amy Cordalis has been fishing on these waters all her life. You gotta get me in a little bit. She's a member of the Yurok tribe, California's largest native group. Well, at least we got a couple. I'd love it if we got a big one. She's also their general counsel. This is a pretty small fish for us, but any fish we're happy to have. Thank you, fish. You know, I mean, we're thankful for this fish, but it, it's not what it used to be. If it was a good year, there'd be a lot of fish in the river, and so there'd be Yurok families down here all fishing. There'd be nets, you know, all through here. The Yurok have relied on salmon fishing for food and income for hundreds of years. But recently, the salmon count has dwindled to historically low numbers. Last year's fall run was just 12% of what it was eight years ago. In four of the past five years, there hasn't been enough fish for the tribe's commercial fishery to operate. Some tribe members can't even catch enough to eat. So we're in the estuary of the Klamath River. This river historically was the third largest salmon producing river in the whole West. Wow. It was massive, right? right um, and right around here, we're, we're, where we are right now. And right here is the epicenter of all of that. This is a fishing village. That's what we're here for. We were here for the fish and to be stewards to those fish. And it, if there's nothing to be a steward for, then you know you, you lose part of that identity. There's a lot of reasons why things have gotten so bad, including the effects of climate change. But the Yurok say the biggest problem is a series of hydroelectric dams operating nearly 200 miles upriver. They're antiquated and inefficient. And the owner of the dams, the energy company Pacific Corp, has said they're open to taking them down. But after more than a decade of negotiations, the tribe is starting to wonder if it'll ever really happen. The river, those fish, they're not going to stand for another, you know, 5, 10, 15 years of these kinds of poor conditions. And if we don't change what's happening on the river, it's going to go away. So why hasn't it happened? The company's delaying. You know, they're not being clear about it and they're, and they're not solving it. And so we're just seeing delay. And delay is unacceptable to us. Jack Hammer John was a Jack Hammer man. When the Great Dam started going up across the West, they were hailed as beacons of American innovation and energy independence. To perform the fruitful task of a civilization rapidly invading the limits of its last frontier. Today, there are about 1,500 hydroelectric dams on American rivers, generating about 7% of the country's electricity. But scientists have come to recognize that they can also do tremendous damage, including cutting off natural fish spawning grounds and increasing the rate of illnesses. We're trying to catch Chinook salmon and check them for these diseases that can affect the, the fish runs. But we're fishing, we're not catching. Barry McCovey studies the health of salmon for the Yurok tribe. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of fish in the river this year. Um, in the past, by this time of year, we would have probably already sampled over 100 fish. We generally sample about 150 fish a year um, on this project, and so far this year we've sampled less than 30. How does the dam result in an uptick in these diseases and, and reduce the stock of, of the salmon. The water temperatures start to increase because the water behind the dams is heating up before it's being released down the river. Water temperature allows the disease ick that we're studying right now to move from fish to fish much faster, higher water temperatures. Water temperatures also delay migration. So if the water is warmer, the fish move slower, the fish congregate in areas, they get stressed out and disease can transfer very quickly. Is there any doubt in your mind that the dams are responsible for at least a certain amount of this? No, no, no doubt at all. Most of the of the losses that we've experienced um, in our fish runs is, I would say, linked directly to dams. The fortunate side of that is those dams can be removed, right? We can reverse this. We can right this wrong. That hasn't exactly been easy. Taking down a dam is a feat of engineering. This particular project would be the largest dam removal in American history. It's also been tied up in reams of state and federal laws. Earlier this summer, federal regulators rejected an agreement between Pacificorp and the Yurok that would have seen the dams come down and let Pacificorp walk away. The government held that the company would have to stay and take responsibility for any cost overruns, something Pacificorp officials said they couldn't go along with. What would Pacificorp like to see happen? Ultimately, we'd li love to see the agreement that we've worked so hard on with so many parties uh, come to fruition. You know, our interest has been how do we allow dam removal to occur 
while making sure that we protect the rest of our customers from you know any negative effects or risks that could happen with dam removal. There's a there's a little bit of corporate speak in there, yeah. right? Like it's hard it's hard to parse what exactly the position is of the company. I mean, do you want to see them come down? Dam removal is not something that the company has advocated, but it's something that we've been willing to work with other parties to enable. So if you talk to the Europe tribes, they've been desperate for this for a long time, right? They say this is a matter of life and death. And they look at Pacific Corp and they say, you guys are just dragging your feet. Nothing's changed as far as our commitment to the settlement agreement. What's changed is the conditions under the settlement agreement have been rejected by federal regulators. I'm confident that we can still work with the Iraq, with other parties, to restore those protections that gave us the reason to be in the agreement in the first place. I think we can get there. You know, dam removal on this scale is a big vision. It's an incredible vision. It's one, frankly, you know, I hope can be fulfilled and fulfilled successfully, but we don't know for sure that it can be. Knock, knock. Hey, Judge. I got this fish for you. You want to throw it in the freezer or where do you want it? While they wait for Pacific Corp to make up its mind, the Yurok are still adapting to life with fewer fish. Uncle, we brought you fish. Yeah, it's not very much, but it's something. So what's gonna happen now? What's gonna happen now is we're gonna get those dams out, one way or the other. Um, for my community, we will not stop until those dams are out. And if you can't? We'll never stop. That's just not an option. Why is it so important for the Yurok tribe to get rid of these dams? The fight for dam removal is a fight for our existence as a people. That's what it means to us. That's what drives the tribe. It's the, the simplest of, of, of human kind of emotions is the preservation of your life. That's what we're doing. On a practical level, what has the dam meant for the way this tribe works and lives? Salmon fishing is at the core of, of who we are as a people. It's embedded into our culture. It's embedded into our way of life. It's embedded into the day-to-day -day lives of the people. Uh, the medium income for the reservation is $11,000. So on a very practical kind of look at this, um, salmon really is for subsistence. It's a protein source that our people uh, desperately need. It's one that we've evolved around and it really does keep our communities alive. The dams were initially put in in the early 1900s. And since we've seen the dams installed and continued to grow, uh, we've seen a steady decline of our salmon runs. And, and as we've seen that decline in salmon runs, we've seen the decline in our, in our culture. And when, when we don't have salmon um, like we have for the last few years, that creates hardships on families, real world hardships on families that don't have the, the protein or the income to provide the protein for their families. What's the holdup now? What's keeping the dams from coming down? There was a FERC order um, that was issued a few months ago and the original plan laid out for uh, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission to um, transfer the license, the actual license that you, you need to operate the dams and to remove them to the Klamath River Restoration Corporation. But that didn't quite happen the way we wanted it to happen. We wanted it to be a clean transfer from Pacificor to the Klamath River Restoration Corporation. Instead, what FERC did is issue an order that said that they will transfer the license to the KRRC, but Pacificor has to remain as a co-applicant, which doesn't quite go along with what the agreement said. We wanted Pacificor off the river, we wanted them out of the deal so that we could move forward with uh, dam removal uh, on our own. So that's what slowed it down. I mean, to some degree, it sounds like what FERC is saying is Pacific Corps shouldn't get away with this. They shouldn't be able to just walk away. And as, so, and as a matter so of fact. It sounds good, right, on some level. As a matter of fact, that's what FERC said. Is they said as a matter of national policy, these corporations who have made money off their facilities should be responsible for removing them. And a good part of me feels that's right. They've made millions of dollars. Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars off of their operation. And really, they've made hundreds of millions of dollars off of the decimation of my culture. They should be responsible for making that right. But at the end of the day, I care about protecting my people. 
I care about protecting our salmon more than I care about making Pacificor pay for it. So you, you, made a, you made a deal that was essentially saying, let's not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Right. Let's, we could have it this way, but let's, let's get this done. And then FERC came in and in a sort of ironic way, an attempt to hold Pacificor to account, put you guys back where you started at square one. No, I think that's that's exactly what happened, and it's been it's been very frustrating. You know, in a way, I can't help thinking that, on some level, right now, the real bad guy here, the real original sin, is the dams themselves, and everyone, whether it's the tribe or Pacific Corps, or the ratepayers, everyone is kind of trapped in that decision to put those up in the first place. Yeah, it, it is. You know, they they were built poorly. Uh, they were constructed with no thought of future generations and the impacts they would have. They're shallow dams. They have created this perfect habitat for um, toxic blue-green algae to thrive. And these are the worst of the bad dams, right? So any water that they dump um, is just more bad water coming down. Uh, and even having said that, the conditions they create still lean us to needing more of that bad water. What's been happening in the negotiations? What are you hoping to see happen now? I do think they are heading in a good direction. If we can convince the individuals to leave their egos out the door and negotiate in a good way, I believe we're gonna come up with a good deal that moves forward on dam removal.